It says, public servants, civilian and military of Ambazonian origin are discharged of the duty of allegiance and obedience and loyalty with the ode to the Republic of Cameroon and, and uh, Paul Beer. This is all the civil servants, all the military, all the gendarmes, all the, um, uh, the police who come from uh, Ambazonia are not to obey Paul Beer again or the Republic of Cameroon. Could there be anything much more treasonable? No. Right. Now they, that was that was part of the court order. Okay. And then they were now to be answerable to the Republic of Ambazonia and its head of state, Fon Fangum Gojitinka. Now, here this thing was published. When you take into um, when um, in the light of the fact that I only asked Paul Beer to implement his own law. They took me to military tribunal and asked for me to be sentenced to death by a firing squad for high treason. Here is an, uh, a publication calling on a, about, say, 29% uh, of the army not to owe any allegiance to Paul Beer. The police not to owe the allegiance to Paul Beer. The gendarmes not to owe any allegiance to Paul Beer. And nobody has touched the publisher of this. Why? Because it happens to be a court judgment. And whatever comes out of court is privileged. It is totally immune from civil or criminal proceedings. So, when I have some, uh, some of these um, nitwits who um, Paul Beer seems to be hanging around here, nobody here on there has challenged this. Not one man has challenged this. It is the the rags tact who call themselves SCNC and so on. Say, ah, that is not a that is not a good judgment. That's not a good judgment. If it was not a good judgment, why is it in the newspapers? In fact, that is the judgment which has given us the best mandate. Enforcement of this judgment is what we are now going to proceed to get international community to enforce, along with all the other legal parameters we've secured. Um, uh, all right, this now backs up what the military tribunal said. So, this was a fantastic thing we got, and then um, it was a matter they didn't know, they thought they were going to come now and start pushing them. They didn't know what we were doing. God was, God was enabling us to assemble our legal arsenal to the point where when we present this to people whom we want to help, they will see a very, very big cover, legal cover, for any intervention. I would like to point out to the fact that what they used to call interference in internal affairs of Cameroon, that bubble has been has burst. This alone has burst the bubble because it said Cameroon occupation of Ambazonia is illegal and constitutes an act of continuing aggression. Furthermore, uh, you find it even goes further to say all persons who succeeded in the March 1, 1992 legislative election in constituencies within the territory of the Republic of Ambazonia henceforth become the nucleus of the transitional legislature of the Republic of Ambazonia and are thus prohibited from participating in the legislature of the Republic of Cameroon. That applies even to those people there. We intend to harness, the time has come for us to harness all this now. Tell those idiots there to stop going to Yaoundé. We must start liberation by ourselves before we can get back in from outside. They will be told to get out of Yaoundé. Now, then there is an order an order expelling from the territory of the Republic of Ambazonia all persons whose presence or duties in that territory derive authority from the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, or any government based in Yaoundé. 
So these are the legal ramifications we have now in our hands. But since this, this was only a Cameroon business, uh, we said we play cool until we get something international. Under Napoleonic Code, civil, uh, um, uh, civil procedure, in which is operative in Cameroon, when the forces of law and order are frustrated from carrying out a judgment of the court, it is the right of the population <clears throat> to use any means possible to enforce that judgment. It is a law of Cameroon, a, a Napoleonic Code, criminal proceeding procedure. It's applicable in Cameroon up to today. Explain that again. Napoleonic Code, mm -hmm. criminal procedure. If a court makes an order, which is supposed to be executed, and the person who is supposed to execute the order, let's say the procurator general or the police or whoever is supposed to execute the order, and execution of order or enforcement of law is based on force or the threat to use force. Right? Now, if that public force is in the control of somebody who refuses to let it be used for enforcement of law, the population can use any way to enforce that law. So that so this particular judgment now gives the citizens of Ambazonia the right the right to move to do whatever they do can whatever they to put to enforce this. So with uh, the only thing I need to again to emphasize is that um, we knew. Many people in Cameroon took this thing just for fun. They didn't know what God was using us to ramas, to collect. This was 1993. That same 1993, this thing emboldened our people to call the AAC. That the first time they went, went and met. But the AAC was hijacked by Yaoundé agents. The AAC was hijacked by on the agents. They were supposed to take this judgment and say, we want this judgment implemented. But it was hijacked by agents of Yaoundé, and nobody mentioned, took any mention, any notice of, notice of this. On the contrary, they started attacking it. A thing which is in their favor, in our, country, our people's favor, they were attacking it. Who were those people serving? Serving the, our people? Of course not. They were serving their own bellies. So, uh, 19, uh, yet these people in 1995, SCNC, they junketed and came across here. Then they are going to take uh, independence from the United Nations. I say, but this people must be joking. What, how do they take independence from the United Nations? When they got to London, there was a rule that nobody in the delegation should see me. But then, Ekotan Elad and Muso broke through. They said, but how? This is somebody we are used to. I mean, how can we come here? Because, unfortunately, I knew where they were. I went to visit them. And uh, I knew, I, I came to realize that there was such a, a, a problem about me from uh, Fossum. Ambassador Fossum, when he saw me, he said, ah, look at the man. We are, look, we are hoping to help us to go to the United Nations. Young man said, First, what are you talking about? Shut up! Uh, first, one, immediately uh, uh, backed off. I realized there was something in the game. And of course, they left to the United Nations. And when they came here, was it to America? When they got here, our boys in diaspora were asking, but where is Fondinka? Young Bang was the person who told them that they asked me to join them and I refused. It's a type of lies of uh, character assassination they always meet on me. Young Bang said, 
I refused to join them. Whereas he didn't want anybody. Foncha had told them that he was going to participate in this exercise, provided that Fondinka has no hand in it. And they were they needed Foncha very badly. Can you imagine? And they made a disgrace of themselves because they come and introduce this man. This was vice first vice president of Cameroon, nineteen sixty one. It is 1995, eh? 35 years after that they were now coming to complain about what he should have complained about in 1961. And now that they had sent him, used, misused, ill-used and abused him totally and left him rotting in, uh, in Quen, that was when he became relevant. Muna too was in the thing. They came, of course they got nothing. But what annoys me is that they got back home and were so unconscionable to fool our people that they had brought back independence. Our people went out in the street dancing. Oh, independence has come, independence has come. Till they break. What did they bring? They brought a flag. A UN flag they bought, which you and I can buy from any kiosk. Say this is independence. <coughs> How can people be so, so unconscionable? Up till now, no SCNC man has apologized to our people for that. For them, they fooled the people. They had collected money for this whole exercise and fooled them that they had brought independence. Where is the independence? Because the bubble burst before long. What happened at the UN, do you know? What happened at the UN? Who did they see at the UN? They used Ambassador Fortune, Fortune who had a, um, a, a, a passport of an ambassador. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got admission anywhere. They are forcing to come and fill forms, Ambassador of Cameroon. Uh -huh, they will open. They come in, but they are now talking, they are now asking the people, asking the ambassador, want you to help our, uh, uh, get your government to back us in the fact that we want Cameroon, um, uh, we want to end Cameroon occupation of southern Cameroon. Cameroon should end occupation of southern Cameroon. Say yes. Then they start going, trying to go into history. The ambassador, I met one of them, he told me, say, I saw your people here. They, I was happy when they got out of my office. How can anybody come and ask me to tell my country that they should come, my country should back southern Cameroon, breaking out of Cameroon? What, are they crazy? You see, it's because of this, their fixation. If they call Ambazonia, it means, oh, they have accepted the, what Dinka has said. But then they go and make a fool of themselves. Ambazonia is not Dinka. It is the name of a country. Ambazon, simple elementary geography. Geopolitics tells you that place is called Ambazonia. It's not a matter of Dinka's, a figment of Dinka's imagination. But because they are liars, the children of the devil, the Bible says those who are liars, the children of the devil, the murderer, they would not see, see the truth and pursue it. But where are they now? What did they bring back? They fool our people. Up to now, they are still coming around SCNC. SCNC. What are they, SCNC? These are the people who created problems in, um, uh, in uh, 1970, 1997 uh, Easter Tide. They created. Um, this terrorism in Bamenda and North uh, and uh, uh, Bamenda and Bui, and that terrorism, from the evidence in the court, it showed that the ACNC has been hijacked, infiltrated by Bia's agent provocateur, and when they did, because they went to burn a house. They made sure they removed the government vehicle that was near the house and pushed it outside. And then set the house on fire. Unfortunately, the person, unfortunately, the person they wanted to kill, God preserved that man. And the man told the story. Why would people who are attacking a government come and meet a government vehicle and make sure they take it out of danger? Were they, were they for the government? I mean, attacking the government. Of course, they were agents of the government. Eh? What disturbs me about the whole of this thing is that the, uh, the thing went around as, 
as a, um, it has created, it has turned the SCNC into a, a terrorist group. They were genuine people. There are still some genuine people in SCNC, but it has been overtaken by a terrorist group. And uh, as I remember, I was in London when Padim Bawa came to live with me. He brought me documents on the internet which were giving an account of what was happening in Bermuda. The person who was spokesman for this SCNC in, in America here was one Shemlon. And I said, ah, you mean to say the people have such a network that there are people out here? Now, I have been here. I've been, I've been here a couple of times. The last time I came here, I met Shemlon for the first time. Shemlon led a delegation to come and meet me to tell me that what they agreed in Adamstown, I should ignore it. I said, but why are you addressing me away from the other people? Let us go to the meeting which people are waiting for me, and we discuss the matter there. I don't know what people did, did in Adamstown. I wasn't there. So we left, as we were going together, did vanish into thin air. Until we finish the meeting, up to today, the only thing I see is internet, attack on Dinka, attack on Dinka. That is the type of terrorist agent who, who claimed to be the spokesman for those terrorists in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Jakiri. What are they attacking about, about you? What, eh? what is the attack? The attack? Mm -hmm. they, they, they have, they, they, they see, they are chronic fault for finders. They must find something wrong. This Dinka has done something wrong. Ambazonia is something wrong. It, the only person who can be attacking Ambazonia are agents of Paul Beer. Simple elementary logic. So, when they keep, and they, if you hear them, it is part of spying. You must appear to be so, especially as a young, a young provocateur, you are supposed to operate in a way to provoke the enemy to attack you people. Now, let me ask you a question. If somebody disagrees with you, is that an attack? And, and does that make that person an agent of beer? Disagreement is a totally different thing. When you are disagreeing, you are disagreeing on a point. This man, first of all, started attacking me. He said, first, that I was, in a, I was one of the people who carried us into, 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 into La Republique. Even though he knew and got to know later on that 64 is when I went back home. By that time, there was already unification in 61. Yeah? Okay. Why was he raising that? In order to discredit me. Huh? To discredit me. What did I do to him which he wanted to discredit? Next one he said, oh, the man is um, he's in a church which is uh, killing people and so on. Why? To discredit me. We have a message out there. Take that message and proceed with it and leave the individual. But he prefers to go for the person. In fact, that man has convinced me that our case is so solid that a top intellectual like him cannot find a place to punch it. He has to go for the person. I'm so happy for... You see, I told him when he came, when I met him, I said, from SM Long, I'm very happy about your activities. I said, first, there are very many things you have accused me personally. I told him in his face. I named them. But they only convinced me that an intellectual like you with a PhD has found nothing to attack in what we stand for. So you are now attacking the person. It, 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 it vindicates our, our story. Our case is so solid that you can find any, nothing to attack there. For example, he is one man who keeps insisting that this thing, which Cameroon could not even touch because it is a public document, it is a judgment of the court, he, without, he has never been to a law school, says that, oh, it is invalid. Shame not. Oh, which is the one that he has got, which is valid? Nothing. That's one, sh one thing Shame not has done. Nothing. He's there to damage whatever Ambazonia is doing. So it is clear and easy that this man has a negative approach to this matter. That's why I call their clique saboteurs 
and Confucianist negative click. ACNC. Let me ask you, let me go back to one of the things that you say he, he accuses you of. Mm. Is, this, is there really, is it, a, um, is it an honest or an legitimate accusation to say that because somebody contributed to let's use the, the, to, to 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 the creation of or contributed to the union between southern cameroons and la republic that that person cannot see the light at some point and say this was wrong is is it i guess i'm what I'm, the question is, is it legitimate for someone to hold you for your activities now because you were part of the 1960 um, politics as far as joining the republic i first of all i was never part of it let us why 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 is that man not attacking funcha why is shemlo not attacking funcha it is dinka a, a, a student because i happen to have been in the united nations that we are suggesting that students had a better role um, had a better uh, influence on determining the course of events in our country as a student than the members of parliament and the prime minister. Have you seen that type of warped thinking? Eh? That type of mind is the mind of a man who is a little bit unstable. That is a student who changed the course of his uh, the, the course of history when the prime minister and the government of Cameroon is there. A student is the one who turned it around. You see how people can expose their own stupidity. All right. Even when Foncha was the one who did it, there's nothing wrong with Foncha turning around and saying, we did something wrong, which he, they did in 1995. Eh? Instead of you embracing these people and saying, all right, thank God you are now realized your error. We are going to work together. Now, he has never taken those people on. Dinka is his target. And that is the biggest target Paul Beer has. Paul Beer fears nobody in Cameroon other than Dinka. So people like that are serving Paul Beer. Because I stand for the truth, nothing else. They feel if they kill me, the truth will disappear. It will never disappear. Our young men will take it up. Now, let me ask you, I know one of the, the things that he accuses you of is, is the fact that you made yourself president. Can you address that? that you were not elected president and you're not the president and all of that. Can you... How do you justify Von Goji Dinka as the president of Ambazonia when there's not been an election, there's no... Uh, the people of Ambazonia have not had an opportunity to say, be our president. How do you now assume to be their president? I'm only going to answer that because you are bringing it out for people to understand it. First, who elected Kabila? Has Kabila been elected? Uh, no. If it, it, they killed his father, the one they are putting now, is it the election? No. Why is none of these people not challenge that? When the Gaul declared himself president of France, and everything, the, it, but for his signature, the Allies would never have invaded France. They had to get, get somebody who is the one they consider as the head of state of France. Who elected the goal? Nobody did. When it is a revolution, the spearhead of the revolution usually becomes the head of that, of that nation. The only people who are making that rubbish are those Paul Beer has said, because here it is. It's now a court judgment. That's why they are trying to tear, that, tear this court judgment down, but they can't tear it down. It is now a court judgment. And I've asked them, any of you wants to be that head of state, come. But they're such cowards, none of them will put their heads on the line. Now, there was also a situation in, in Nigeria where there was also a court judgment. Uh, can you address that? Which court judgment? In Abuja. There was. Oh, yes. Kapo and Abuja. Yes. That, uh, uh, first of all, there, is no, there was no case between Scapo and Cameroon or Nigeria. Scapo is an unincorporated body with no legal standing. It is 12 human beings that went to court. If they had gone as Scapo, nobody would have even listened to them. 
That's point number one. There was no case between Scapo and so on. Those 12 individuals, a few of them decided to call Scapo. And it's all scattered now anyway. But they went to, to um, Abuja and did, they started a superb job. I didn't know about it till Ngekaluma phoned me. Where he got my, uh, my number from, he said he got it from Muko. He said, I must come and help them. I said, help you do what? What is happening? He said, we have filed a case in, uh, in court in Abuja. I said, what is the nature of the case? He mumbled and told me they're asking Nigeria to help them in the case as a, uh, in the, to put uh, our case at the Hague, International Court of Justice. I said, that would be fine. But since I don't know the details, how am I supposed to help? However, I'm going to instruct the Honorary Consul General of Ambazonia. We have one in Nigeria, recognized by the Nigerian government. To get our archives, get a lawyer to supply you some of the documents which we consider will be vital for getting whatever you want. So we did. I instructed our the gentleman, he flew to Abuja, instructed a lawyer there, and supplied all these documents, which they gave them, which they were to file for them. These same people who said I should help them, now turn and say, oh, Fondinga wants to hijack our case. You see, that mentality of inferiority complex, they asked me to help, I send them documentation. They say, oh, this man wants to, to, to take our thing. Liberation of a country is their thing. You see that our mentality? <laughs> However, when I first read the first uh, order of that woman, that judge, I say, yes, something is going to come out of it. When she was adjoining the case, because they had said, Oh, these people have no local standard, they have no so and so. The woman ruled that they have a right to file this action. And what they had applied for was solid. But when they what they came with, when they when they uh, you see they took it and went to the Hague. <clears throat> the lawyer they took along could not be allowed to enter Holland. Was he a Nigerian lawyer? He's a Nigerian lawyer. Okay. And we thought that... <clears throat> Why did they need a lawyer? The lawyers themselves? Who? Most of the 12. Who are the lawyers themselves? Gumne. Gumne is a lawyer. I don't know. I... Gumne is not a lawyer. Um, uh, Nangam. You know Nangam, no? Yes. Nangam is a teacher. Uh, there was no lawyer. The only lawyer who was among them was uh, Mukwelengo. Eh? He's dead now. That was the only lawyer among them. Okay. So, so they needed to hire a Nigerian lawyer? They hired a Nigerian lawyer. Okay. And uh, the impression I had from Luma was that they were being helped by Asorok. That's the, uh, the presidency. Of Nigeria? Yes. That's the impression I had from them. So I knew they may have given them a lawyer. And this man kept posing as a lawyer who had been supplied by the government until they got to... Uh, the airport in uh, in Amsterdam, they say, no, you can't enter. Now, if this person was a, a Nigerian government agent, they would have given him a diplomatic passport or something to get in there. So this man had to go back, ostensibly, according to them, to go and get the situation regularized. That's what forced these people, Dangam and Gumne, to come to London. Then they phoned me. Uh, I said, where are you phoning from? Say, we're in London. I said, huh? What happened to the case? Then they told me the story. They wanted to go and deposit the case. And uh, they have uh, run into um, uh, trouble because this uh, lawyer could not get an uh, entry. Uh, I have can go in and out of Holland, have a free passport to go take me anywhere. So I rushed there. I met them to see what, I, if I saw it, I would have gone because I was in daily contact with the Nigerian legal team, which was then in The Hague. 
I would have carried it to them. In fact, I had phoned one of them, thanking them for what was happening in Abuja, and they were waiting for it. So I saw in this thing absolutely nonsense. You mean the judgment? The judgment. What happened was their own lawyer, whether it was bought or I don't know, joined the Nigerian lawyer and they came with a compromise that they had agreed on. That it was more or less to ask Nigeria to uh, raise the case, uh, make a case against Cameroon uh, because of uh, southern Cameroon. And uh, I said, my goodness. Are you saying it was not a court judgment? No, I'm not saying it's not a court judgment. What happened was that what they forced, because when two lawyers on opposite side have agreed on what the judgment should be, the judge cannot go behind it. The judge has to put that down. Okay. And what came out was absolute nonsense. I asked them, I said, what am I going to take to these people? The head of the, uh, of the Nigerian team, uh, King Jede, I know him very well. What are they going to use here? Then, what was in there that was... What should have been in there? What should have been in there to state what we told, what we, what we, what my people, what uh, uh, got my, uh, my people in Abuja to tell them was this. Get Nigeria to file two documents. One, challenging the local standard of Cameroon in Bakasi and put out the plebiscite to show that the Bakasi uh, with the plebiscite entitled Cameroon to be in a confederacy with the Republic of Cameroon and that um, uh, to be in a uh, confederacy with, with Ambazonia and that by jumping and coming right to Bakasi they were more aggressors than Nigeria having taken a few square inches of Bakasi and that they and they also showed them the, this court judgment which says Cameroon is illegally occupying Ambazonia. Now let's go and back. That, wait, wait, let me finish. If they show them that, and they insist that Cameroon is an aggressor, has no local standard before this court, it's just like, a, like a, a, somebody, a trespasser, a piece of land, is still another trespasser. They say, well, show us your title. You have no title, you cannot chase this other one away. They would have got the case struck out. Cameroon case would have been struck out. And Ambazonia would have been free if so, if so facto. Because it would have proved that Cameroon has no right to have even occupied Ambazonia up to Bakasi. And so they have no right to challenge Nigeria occupying a few um, square meters of uh, the Bakasi Peninsula. That was why we asked them they should make sure Nigeria, in that court judgment, compares Nigeria to file these documents. They rejected it got this compromise and came. I asked uh, Ndangam, I said, none of you is a lawyer, so you wouldn't probably understand this. I said, I read it to them. Is there anything here which compares Nigeria to do anything? He said, no. The judgment was unenforceable even against Nigeria, let alone getting Nigeria to do something. That's why it has remained high and dry. Nothing has happened to it. Just clarify one thing for me. So you're saying that even the plebiscite did not extend the boundaries of La Republic du Cameroon to have a maritime boundary with Nigeria. But that's what I started all this long showing you about this plebiscite. I told you that independent country, independent country, we only cooperate in eight matters. So how can La Republic come to our country? Even the federal could not even take a part of our land. Let look at the European Union. Is there anybody interfering with the? Uh, with a land of the uh, Belgians or, uh, or the smallest one is um, uh, Liechtenstein, 20,000 people. Has anybody got there say the EU wants to occupy uh, your part of your country? If one is independent, but they are cooperating. This is what we were to be with Cameroon. Now let me ask you this. Is this thing of a confederation something you are now deducting from... From the, from the documents. Okay. It was not said this is going to no, be... No, it's a deduction from the document. The legal setting is that as long as each person is independent, the other one is independent, 
the union is a confederacy. A confederacy under uh, political science means a league of nations. Two nations creating a league between themselves. Okay. Now, so the so the so the Abuja does not have is so the Abuja case is not the same as the Bamanda. No, 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 no. In fact, I've waited for them to use it. Let us see. You know, recently, Shemron sent me an email talking about uh, the scapo and what they got in Abuja. Why have they not used it? Am I the one to use it for them? Okay, but move forward to since since the HCB, uh, what and you talked about seeking an international mandate, right? Yes. Now, uh, as I said, the uh, we in fact what we have up to now, we have seven seven areas which each of which con con constitute a mandate number one is the united nations resolution 1608 which calls for the implementation of the plebiscite result immediately that is mandate number one implementation of that of that thing means getting cameroon out because Cameroon is there to prevent implementation. Cameroon is occupying Ambazonia to prevent 1608 being implemented. That was the purpose of Britain bringing Cameroon there to make sure it becomes, it, you, cannot, you cannot implement it when there are no two independent countries. What does 1608 say again? 1608 says implement the, um, um, here it is. Considering that the people of the two uh, parts of the trust territory, having freely and secretly expressed their wishes with regards to their respective futures in accordance with General Assembly Resolution 1352 uh, and 1473, 1352 was the, the UN resolution for a plebiscite in Southern Cameroon, and 1473 was for a plebiscite in Northern Cameroon. Okay. Right. The decisions made by them through democratic process under supervision of the United Nations should be immediately implemented. That is an international mandate. And, and, and according to the two alternatives, that implementation means those, yes. those eight items. Items only. So, implementation means recognizing the two countries as sovereign and independent, mutually equal, and creating a structure where they are accountable each to the central structure for the eight matters listed there. A question for you. What is the responsibility of the UN to see that that was implemented? The UN now called on Britain to take the initiative to get it done. As I told you earlier, Britain succeeded. So, oh, no, we are going to handle this matter. Uh, we, we can handle it. They had their own agenda. And so the UN never came back to supervise to see whether Britain did what No, Britain did everything possible to make sure UN had nothing to do with it. They will do it. Is it now wrong for the people of Southern Cameroon to still hold the, the UN uh, responsible for not implementing? I mean, because... No, in you, effect, have, you have a point there. But the problem is, is, how do you hold them? How do you hold the UN responsible? Is there a methodology for holding the UN responsible? There is none. So you can only use the 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 uh, the, the methodology which the UN has set in uh, put in place to address to seek redress, and which is what we did. UN has created what they call Human Rights Commission Committee under the optional protocol of international and uh, international convention on civil and political rights now okay. you can now approach that organ and tell them because Cameroon has imposed its nationality on Ambazonians it has deprived Ambazonians of the, 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 the right to their nationality and it has deprived them of 
the right of self-determination. These are all rights under guaranteed under the ICCPR, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Cameroon signed up the optional protocol to be bound by this on the 27th of June 1984. Until that, up till that time, we had nowhere to go. So, that was, as I said, that was mandate, 1608 was mandate number one. Now, um, uh, Cameroon Law 84 stroke 01, the Restoration Law, is a mandate. It breaks up the alliance, I mean, it breaks up the union, and it is now a matter of why the new social order was saying that implements that law. And that law was the one that took La Republic, instead of being either federal Cameroon or United Cameroon, to going back to being La Republic du Cameroon, yes. which was independent in 1968, yes. with its borders east At, of the Mongo. Yes. So okay. once that came in, we are asking them, implement it. That's a mandate, number two. Implement 8401. The next one was, implement the military tribunal ruling that my call that Paul Bia should go to the east of the Mongo is legitimate. That is mandate number three. Then ACB 2892, the High Court judgment which is here, is mandate number four. Before you go forward, you said something about that particular judgment no longer in the, in the court papers in Bermuda. Yes, what happened was that when the uh, I was told from down there, I'm not in Cameroon, when they told that once this thing was published in 1993, uh, French ambassador read this. I said, but if this is what has happened, and there is some and there is a, a move to implement it, you don't expect France to back you against to defy a, a court order. It's not just done in France. Even the president of France cannot defy a court order. So go and find one way of getting that thing uh, nullified. Paul Beer then gets the court to issue hearing notices to release the case, put the case back on the list for hearing. Issue hearing notices. In 83, a case that was done since 92. I mean, in uh, 93, a case that was done si uh, since 92. What year did they issue the notice? 80, 93. Okay. And when was that case won? 92. Okay. So, um, they tipped Beringui that there was a, not a hearing notice coming and Beringui took to the woods, made sure it was not served. And that was the only person they could serve. They couldn't even come to they couldn't come to Nigeria to serve me. So the thing the, the writ expired. And in any case, when they they had written us a certain letter earlier, because they even issued they had issued a hearing notice for the for the thirtieth of Sept of uh, June nineteen ninety two, then they issued another one for the eleventh of July nineteen ninety two. Uh, we were bound to write and tell them, look, the time given for uh, Cameroon and President Bia to file a counter had elapsed. And the case was now, I mean, the orders were now uh, absolute. The case, the, the court is functus officio, meaning that it's a, it's a legal jargon to show that once a court has been seized with a case and once it has finished that case that court cannot sit on it again the court that court is functus officio the high court of Bamda is called functus officio you can only go on appeal now to go on appeal one year after is time bad let me ask you something uh why did ambazonia not take that opportunity to go and expose uh, the, the expose some of what could have been exposed in a in a court like the 
I, I'm assuming that La Republic was coming to actually just fight this thing in court now. Fight, fight. They were not coming to fight it. They were coming to tell a judge to throw it out. Okay, so so you yeah, all they wanted was to get a judge. That's why we framed it in a way that a judge would not touch his finger there until they come to court. Okay, so you did not see as an opportunity for Ambazonia to go and put this case to the public and be published abroad, like you said. Which case? Which case to the public again? No, I'm as well, I'm saying when La Republic was trying to reopen it. Yes. Why did Ambazona not see it as an opportunity to now go in court and say yes? You don't go to court and do a case when the court says, when the law says it is something to Okay. You don't sit down and come one year after that you want to fight a case. No, I mean, instead of being, uh, taking off to the words, why didn't he wait and say, yeah, let's go to court and judge it and I will show you that you are occupying our land illegally? So the court has already passed a judgment. Why should he go to court and do that again? So it was not to his advantage to do that. Hey, what, what, what advantage was he going to get that? When, first of all, they are going to come there and they would have already told the judge to just throw it out. The okay. may not even be allowed to talk. They would just say, oh, this case is uh, it's not within our jurisdiction. We throw, it, we throw it out. That is it. Okay. Why were you giving yourself to go there and be a party to that type of uh, uh, fake exercise? Okay. You got a judgment in your hand. You then go to court to expose it. Let us, uh, ex uh, ex because even if it was exposed, what, what use was it going to be? Okay. They would first or not allow him to talk. Okay. All right. The best he could have done was to get the court to issue a contempt order to the Cameroon government for failing to carry out the instructions, I mean, the orders which had already become absolute. Okay. Right. So the next one was the case I took the British government to court in London. <coughs> the British had wanted to have me deported. And I believe Cameroon had a hand in that. Because when I ran from Nigeria to come to Britain, it was because uh, um, uh, Cameroon had uh, got into a relationship with Abuja and with uh, Abacha to arrest me, and I was arrested. Abacha was now trying to make uh, a relationship with neighboring countries fine. And I was now to be given to Cameroon as a reward if Cameroon would stand by him. I was arrested. In Nigeria. In Nigeria, in Abuja. My wife immediately sent a letter to the UN High Commission for Refugees because I was then a mandate refugee, United Nations mandate refugee. So the people sent somebody right to Abuja, said, This man is our man. And anything connected with him, we are to be informed. Why is he arrested? Abacha took fright. That it was coming, it was going to come, become international, and I was released. I realized that now staying in that country was no longer safe, so I moved to Britain. Now, ninety-five, the British now. Uh, when I asked for traveling papers, as I was entitled to, they found one excuse or the other to say that oh. But they are going to send me back to Nigeria. So I filed an action in court. Say I have a right of abode. I am a British citizen by being an ethnic Ambazonian. And explored all the law and put it before them. That the um, the uh, trusteeship agreement, Article. Five one says that Britain shall rule Ambazonia as as part of its own territory, not its overseas territory. I compared it with the one for Tanganyika. No such thing was there. I said that means. I was, I was like an English boy. The right of a boat in England is the right compared to ethnic Ambazonians. And that right lapses. It lapses only when Ambazonia becomes independent. At the present, Ambazonia is illegally occupied by La République de Cameroon and it constitutes an act of uh, continuing aggression. All that was in my affidavit. 
and that they occupied Cameroon, I mean Ambazonia, thanks to the British. They organized these people to occupy our country, so they are now surrogates of British imperialism. Until we are free, then can the British citizenship lapse. Now, the, British, the lawyer representing the, the uh, Secretary of State for, for um, Colonies. Home Affairs, home affairs okay. sent a letter. Uh, this was still exchange of papers indicating that, uh, oh, there was an ordinance of 1959 which had changed all uh, British citizens uh, who were people of uh, trust territories and colonies uh, who were British citizens that changed it to British protected persons. So I do not, I don't have a British citizenship. That's what he said. So I countered by saying, not even the House of Parliament, a, a law, an Act of Parliament, can change an international treaty. It just cannot change an international. Let alone an order in council. So, let me have my traveling papers, or let's go in there. They realize now that it meant the five million Ambazonians who have there are British citizens. And if this case was publicized, it would open the floodgates for everybody to claim to come into London. So they say, all right, uh, withdraw this case and we'll give you your papers to travel. I said, give me the papers first. So they fixed the papers and gave me. I preferred the international, I mean, the Geneva Convention papers because my family was in Nigeria. If I had taken a British passport, I would pay about 40 pounds before getting a visa to enter Nigeria. Right? But if it was a um, uh, Geneva one, I would pay three pounds. So I asked them I wanted a Geneva Convention travel document. They gave me those. They said, all right, withdraw the case. I said, I'm not withdrawing the case. You've now conceded that you have no case. Let us now sign and may get the court to issue a consent order, an order that compelling you to deliver the doc documents to me. So it's on the record that you gave these documents to me by virtue of a mandamus. Oh, the solicitor, um, uh, government lawyer tried to make some noise about it. If that's the case, we are going to say, let's go to court. Let's go to the open court and argue this matter. Their backs were, they were right on the floor. They didn't know how to expose this matter and save themselves from five, uh, five million niggas coming to claim, Ambaz uh, uh, for Ambazonia, coming to claim uh, a <laughs> British citizenship. So they say, all right. Uh, how do you want the judgment framed? So I say, I'll frame it for you. I frame the judgment, send it to the, to, to, to the um, government lawyer. He signed, because when it's a consent order, the parties must sign. So they signed, sent it to me, I signed, and then delivered it in court. It was now entered as a judgment of the court. So that does that now make Britain again... Does that no? Let me put it the other way. Does now does that now make Ambazonians, peoples of the former British trust territory of Southern Cameroons, British citizens? It doesn't make them. It it, cons it I mean, it confirms that they are. It's not making what made them British citizens is the trusteeship agreement. This judgment is confirming that until that country becomes free, until Ambazonia becomes free, that citizenship remains subsist and in fact i've handled two cases in london about ambazonians like that cited that that you can't move them they are british citizens and they are left there with all full benefits i cited i may mean, use my case as a as president, a president yes so that is what uh, uh that's how this so that was uh Another high, that is the High Court of Amanda, the High Court of London case, which confirmed that we are illegally occupied by uh, La République de Cameroon. 
and we are British citizens. Now, then there was the International Court of Justice. Cameroon filed a case against Nigeria in the International Court of Justice, uh, claiming that, asking the International Court of Justice to hold the parties to the legal principle that boundaries inherited from colonialism are binding. You can't exceed them. The ICJ held, upheld that argument. And then dutifully went out to spell the boundaries they are talking about. Let me get the... Uh, yes. The boundaries they are talking about. You see here. They first of all enunciated the boundary according to the chronology. The Anglo-German boundary of 1913. Here it is. It creates the western borders of Ambazonia and eastern border, southeastern border of Nigeria. This is the one. Then they enunciate, they stress the uh, Franco um, a Franco-British demarcation boundary of 1919. This is the one. Right from Chad to the sea. This is the one. That is the Mongo boundary. And that's the one that created Southern Cameroons, Northern Cameroons, and the Cameroons under British control. In Cameroon under French control. No, I'm saying that's the boundary that separated the German... That that separated the German Cameroon, giving British part and... A and French part. Right. That's right. That is in 1991. Okay. The ICJ stressed that. They also went to stress this boundary in the north here, which was created by an ordinance, or the British, uh, Ordinance in Council 1930, the Jeffreys boundary. So, once they have stated that, and they say parties should respect the boundaries they inherited at independence. Which means Cameroon should move from here back to it to uh, west east of the Mongo. You mean La Republic of Cameroon? Yes, La Republic of Cameroon. When I call Cameroon, I'm calling it as opposed to Ambazonia. Okay. Cameroon should get back there, get out of Ambazonia to their own side, which is called corresponding with the, what I was the new social order. So that is what the ICJ said that. That's another mandate. Then the, the, uh, the seventh one happens to be the United Nations uh, Human Rights Committee. When this judgment came, the ICJ judgment came, I said, here we are. Paul Bia was able to keep Ambazonia out of was able to keep Ambazonia out of the ICJ. But here there is a forum. How did he do that? Because we are not a state. Ambazonia is not recognized at the United Nations. So the ICJ, or International Court of Justice, is only between state and state. So when we filed our interpreter, they used that to say, we are not a state, so they can't, we cannot be heard. But then there is another forum. The International uh, the Uni uh, Human Rights Committee, a state as an, uh, and an individual have the same equality. So we filed this uh, uh, claim, accusing Cameroon of illegal occupying our country, Ambazonia, and therefore imposing Ambazonian nationality on us, imposing Cameroonian nationality on Ambazonians, and depriving Ambazonians of the right to nationality and the right of self-determination. We made claims about, like, um, we therefore asked for relief. Relief was involved also compensation 